You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. Alan. Yeah, man. Hey guys, welcome to Razor Riffs. This episode is sponsored by Amy Bricks. Alan, read your thing. Hey, Alan, what's up? We, we rehearsed well, I mean, this. No, I understand that. I You're understand Alan. Everybody. I'm Keith. Man. I understand it. What is it? Could you please this read is that? amazing. Could you yeah. direct us? Could you please direct us? I appreciate uh, uh, that. Hey, Alan, what's up? No, I'm Keith. I said, hey, Alan, what's up? Which and then, you did not I'll say. Okay. Didn't, didn't say Heather anything. will be Alan. Go. Go. All right. Hey, Heather, what's up? Not much, man. I'm just trying to sell my home. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah, but I haven't had much luck. Of finding a real estate agent that I can trust to sell my home at the highest price. Oh, well, I know somebody. You do? Yes, Amy Brick, real estate broker with Brick and Company Real Estate. Wow, why? what makes Amy so special? Amy specializes in helping people sell their home for the highest price with the least amount of hassles. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. She's been selling real estate and getting more people, more money, for what they're asking for for the past 15 years. Oh, sounds like she has a lot of experience. Wow, that's really good to know. I just sold my home for a big price, and now I could afford to move back in with my parents. That's great. Will she be happy to talk to me about getting the best price for my home or my loved one's home? Absolutely. Give her a call at 562-335-5269 or visit her on the website amybrick.com. That's Amy B R I C K dot com. Wait, I want to make sure that she's a licensed California realtor. Do you happen to have her California license number? I do. Her California license number is B R E. O one three five eight one two nine. She sounds legit. I'm gonna check her out right now. Oh, thanks, Heather. Back to the show. Thank you. <laughs> I that, love directing that. That's a print. <laughs> yeah, that, that was awesome. That was uh, that was uh, improvised. Thank you so love much, Heather you. McDonald. I was a realtor. Oh, were you? Ah. I, I respect ah. Amy's hustle. Oh, oh beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. That's a tough business, right? right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just it's it's. There's two businesses where there's the most rejection. It's real estate and acting, and I've done them both. So I'm just very used to uh, rejection and humiliation. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, I wanted to introduce uh, you to the rifters out there. We call the fan base that listens to the show the rifters. Oh, clever, (laughs) clever. (laughs) So, but uh, I wanted to give you like a proper introduction, but uh, so here it is. Uh, Tonight on Ra- Raise the Rifts, you've seen her on Chelsea Lately. She has a Netflix special, a New York Times best-selling author, and currently the host of Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. Heather McDonald is here. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yes. What an intro. Yay. Is that a good? A I, Perfect. I like throwing the New York Times best-selling. I, twice. Yeah. I have, I have I like two that. books. Oh, yeah. Wrote. Yes. And, uh, it's hard to write a book. Um, but you can still get them, and you can get them on Audible. The first one is You'll Never Blue Ball in This Town Again. Yeah. It's about all the guys that I just dry humped in L.A. in the 90s. <laughs> and the second book is called My Inappropriate Life, which is about raising kids That's while great. being an edgy comic and That's putting right. them in Catholic school. Yeah. That's great. In I, my life. Use a Catholic school. I think it's cool that when I, <laughs> like, because New York Times bestseller, that's a really hard award to get, you know, so that's awesome. Well, it, it, yeah, it's based on how many books no. you sell in a certain amount of time. It's, you got to make it for the week. You have to yeah. sell so many, and it's it's competitive, you know, who you're up against that week or the book that comes out. And uh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's really hard. I, I love interviewing authors on my show because I appreciate how hard it is to get people to buy books. Yeah. But what's great about the listeners is that most of these books, at least mine are, but many are, are on Audible and you can listen to them. So if you, because most people that are listening yeah. sure. might not have time sure. to like actually read the real book. Audible. Yeah, but, that's what they but do now. educate yourself and and, uh, and like enjoy that. it. And, that's great. And get to listen too. Do you do the, the auto? Mm-hmm. Like I the, did. And oh, it was awesome. hor- horrible. Really? Because well, I wasn't doing the podcast at the time that I did the Audible, and I think I would be less hard on myself now. Uh-huh. So you start reading your own sure. book, and then in your head you're like, oh, my God, this is so great. I haven't stumbled. I haven't stumbled. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. <laughs> and then because it's like a whole mm-hmm. other company that's producing it, you have a producer in there, so every time you stumble, they're like, stop, go back, stop, go back. 
and it took like four nights every night from 6 to 10 p.m. to do it oh. and it just oh everyone will say it's a nightmare but if I was to ever do another book and do the audio, I'd be like, I don't care if it's screwed up. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Because it might be funnier if it's yeah, screwed up. Yeah, like, who like how our, Yeah, now yeah, I know just, people are like, now just, a couple of people that are doing it now that are um, are like, oh, I added yeah. stuff or I cried during sure. it. And it's like, I think that makes it more exciting. That's cool. Yeah. The, author, yeah. the author is actually feeling mm-hmm. her own uh, lines and script and just emoting. But when I first did my first book, they said... Um, yeah, we're going to have, we want a professional, like, reader to do it. Wow. You are a Yeah, and I said, well, reader. then forget it. <laughs> and then about, like, a year later, they're like, okay, we'll sure. now have you do the voice. Yeah. I'm like, you understand? Like, sure. I'm like, TV personality, wouldn't they want to hear my voice? Yeah. And um, the few Audible books that I've listened to that are, like, done by professional readers are so weird. Yeah. Like, there was this one about this hooker. I love books about hookers. and um, I do, too. Actually. Oh, like, like a high-class <laughs> hooker in Vegas. And the way, the girl was so ridiculous. She was like... My stiletto heel slips out of the cab <laughs> as it hits the pavement of the Bellagio. <laughs> I'm excited for a while. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, this is, you're taking me That's out funny. of it. You think you're putting me That's into it, but it's funny. so put upon that. That's I would have much rather had the real hooker just be like, <laughs> I step my stiletto heel yeah. out for another night of boning in Vegas. Like, just <laughs> tell the truth. Yeah. yeah, I like the ones with the more man, man like the more character in it. Like, yeah. uh, like uh, Tim Curry used to do the a series of a Fortune Events audio. Books, oh, okay. And he used to like change his voice for every character. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that's very hard because I don't know oh. if you've read those books. She, There's she, so many characters. She does character work. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like. Uh, but uh, hey, so uh, we wanted to start the show with a with a joke, but then like Alan messed up everything. So I don't know if this joke's going to be funny now. But do you right. want us to do sure. the joke? Whatever you want. Blame uh, me. I'm the punching bag here. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> hey, have you seen Chelsea lately? Oh, that's great. No, I <laughs> haven't. I haven't seen her in three years. No, no, but like that was, I get it. I get uh, it. That's hilarious. That was. <laughs> has anyone it. said that joke before? No, but your guy here that's but, filming oh, the Facebook, he no. met me downstairs oh, yeah. so that I would make sure I got a parking no. spot, which I did. Yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, you know, um, it was in fifth grade. And I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Some, did Kevin Spacey touch you in fifth grade? Like, what story Whoa. are you about to tell me? And he's like, no, it was in fifth grade that I started watching Chelsea yeah. Lately. It was the first right. season of Chelsea Lately. And I'm like, well, thank you for making me feel so freaking old. Oh. But um, he was very complimentary to me, which is all I care she about. Yeah, a Grant's fan. a sweetheart. A yes. I, I actually know you from White Chicks. Oh, thank yeah. you. I oh. loved doing White Chicks. I they, I worked on writing the yeah. script of White Chicks I, I, with oh, the you? Wayne's yes. brothers. Yeah, I told oh. you. I told you. Yes. I didn't know you wrote it. Wrote it though. Yeah, the writer on wow. that. They they had you. already sold the concept of the show yeah. and had like you mm-hmm. know kind of the beats of the script yeah. and then I was one of the writers that contributed. Yeah. Oh. And um and I remember my dad was saying oh, they've got to hire you know because I'd worked on another project with them and I'm like oh my god they just sold this thing called White Chicks and. My dad's like, well, don't you think they need an actual white chick yeah. on the writing staff? And I was like, yeah. And so it was such a funny idea. And it was so much fun. And we'd go to Keenan's house every day and uh, sit around and write this script. And it was just amazing, fun, hilarious time. And then uh, I wrote I wrote a couple scenes. But one scene that I wrote was about a sales girl. And then they cast me as a sales girl. Yeah. So I got to fly oh, cool up to Canada. That? and. And be in it too, which was really, really fun. So now it's like that's like a cult favorite, and now younger kids are discovering it. And everyone always talks about would there be a second one? And I don't know the guys. It was so, it was like so awful to be in that makeup all day long. Yeah, yeah. And they would finish filming at like eleven p.m. and then have to get up at like two thirty a.m. to start getting in the makeup all over again. So. I think that's why they've put it off. And now, I don't know. You know, Marlon has this show coming back as NBC sick show. So mm-hmm. I think it's one of those movies where, like, I don't think you should make a sequel to it. You don't. Yeah, because it's so. Like, there's cult. Uh, I consider it a cult classic comedy. Okay, you know I mean? cool. That's and, awesome. And, like, I consider the very uh, first scary movie very cult Hilarious. classic. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, uh, you know, of course, the second one I thought was funny because they had Tim Curry and David Cross, and I love yes. those guys. But I, I still liked the first one way better. But then after the second one, you know. It, it the, got killed. Actually, yeah. the Weinstein brothers uh, screwed them over. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Um, before, you know, he seems to do that to actually, Yeah, they didn't screw them, <laughs> screw them. But they, he was also like, he has a horrible reputation for being like a, yeah. an asshole in business. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know the exact story, but basically I think they got kind of fucked. And then somehow they then took the franchise over and then they, they separated themselves. So the Waynes did not write any more scary movies after two. Yeah, but So it was a different group of people. And that's why they were like, had, had kind of have a different tone and a little goofiness. Yeah. More goofy, more corny. But if you know it's like the the scary movies after i mean there may have been one or two good jokes after I mean, no it but, was yeah it was just like was a bunch just, of like pop culture jokes and it doesn't really work because in this day and age yeah. like the, y- the, the jokes come out like you know that oh. day on twitter and on yeah. social media and in youtube videos and on you know even snl sometimes the jokes seem oh that happened monday and we're oh. seeing this saturday you know yeah. so to then have it be a movie where it's like seven months later they're making fun of Kim Kardashian's cover of Paper Magazine. You're like, okay. Yeah, you know. it's like, what's scary about that? I don't know if that's you know what, what I mean? they did, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, a something like a pop culture thing. I totally get that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I think White Chicks was one of those classic uh, movies that I don't, I don't think making a sequel is necessary. And I know they probably get a lot of. I think they sold. Um, I think they had something in the works a few years ago that just didn't happen. But I have a great idea for another. Uh. But then sometimes I was, I was talking to my friend and and. I do think it's okay now, but like last year with, um, you know, the awareness of transgender people, right. um, you know, coming out and the sensitivity to it and the way of addressing it, I was like, oh my God, I don't know that we would have gotten away with white chicks. I don't know if someone would have seen it as somehow not being what it was, which has been, there's been a history of movies that we actually watched in writing the movie, like Tootsie and mm-hmm. Some Like It Hot, where men have to dress up like women to... yeah to get to a goal or figure something out and um that's an interesting so it, it's not but i'm like god in this hypersensitive world mm-hmm. does anyone but nobody really has so i think it would st- if they wanted to do it i think there's a fun way to do it yeah. yeah so another thing is like i like is when this whole uh, harvey weinstein thing happened you went on fox and said that late night shows aren't really making jokes on him they're making jokes on trump and i thought that was really like as a comedian, I really like that because not a lot of comedians honest. will be I daring like that. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, the Hollywood hypocrites are my worst, yeah. Yeah. and I'm the last month has been the greatest thing that's happened in 2017. I love that the, it's as people are telling. I love that True. we're realizing how disgusting and gross. And all these assholes that have gotten away with this shit for years there are just go. scrambling and yeah. losing their deals. I love every second of it. Beautiful. And I, um, you know, and I, I don't know that, you know, and, and when, when, um, when Trump won and it's been a year and that we know that he's going to be the president and you know, the election happened a year ago and right. uh, people were, you know, women are just like, oh, my, you know. I think if you want to look on a positive side, which nobody ever does, but I'm saying... I think that maybe women having such a a strong fear about Trump being in the White House is what propelled them to speak up and talk. And I don't think it, I think maybe if Hillary was in the office, we would have been a little complacent. And we would have been like, wow, we've made it. We can lay back on our laurels, laurels. But instead, it was like, holy shit, you know, Planned Parenthood is being closed and these things are happening. And and women are just like, I'm freaking telling yeah. and so i think maybe be grateful for the situation because i don't know that we would be here today or i don't know that the you know these hollywood elites that are all democrats maybe it would have been squelched i mean yeah. you know the latest thing with the weinstein what has happened yeah. no no the latest no. thing that's came out ronan farrow wrote another amazing article for the new yorker and basically weinstein and his attorney hired this private company that's like a private CIA that are these Israeli op- operatives oh. or something that um, basically like a Ray Donovan kind of thing. Wow. So these, these people Ray go Donovan. in and they um, this woman had a whole fake profile, pro- fake life, fake like social media and she reaches out to Rose McGowan and she um, she's like, oh my god, I, you know, you're so amazing. I heard you have a book coming out. This is a year ago. Right. Okay. I heard you have a book coming out about, you're going to you know, talk openly about sexual harassment and assault in Hollywood and I'm a head of some woman's corporation or whatever, you know. They meet three times. Rose McGowan and this woman and Rose McGowan is thinking she's meeting someone that's like, 
I don't know, going to share her story or book her for speaking engagement. I'm not sure. The whole time she was reporting back to Weinstein oh. about what the book is going to be about and all the private confirmation, wow. you know, conversations they had. And so Rose McGowan's like, I feel like I'm in like a house of mirrors. Like, I don't know who to believe. But it is all that stuff, all those yeah. things that you hear about powerful people being able to pay for a, um, you know, a crisis PR management team mm-hmm. to like squelch stories sure. and say, all is true. Wow. wow. It all exists. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Where they call up and go, don't run that story, yeah. you know, yeah. um, I'll get you Laker tickets. I'll put you on my jet. I'll. It's all sure. Yeah, it's all about yeah. the money. Yeah. So and the power and the power and the power. And the power. Yeah. And the power sure. You know, it's it's about the power. And there's some things that money can't buy, That's and right. that is the power. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the way uh, Weinstein got his wife to he bullied these actresses to have to wear his wife's dresses on oh, the red carpet. He said, "I'm going to pull the publicity fund for your movie if you don't yeah. wear my wife's ugly dress, Felicity Huffman." So she had to wear it. Ouch. And they weren't that great. Yeah, he and really liked finally, those dresses. Yeah, you finally get to the you know the Oscars, sure. and you're like, really, I can't wear like what I wow. want to wear. I have to wear what well, you want to wear. That's yeah, that's, and that's she, definitely yeah, and so I there I just go. love that it's all being exposed, and I don't. Yeah, I will be very interesting to watch well, the Oscars right. and to see if anyone even gives a shit because I think. Oh, can I say bad words? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I, no, I don't no, think. No, I just think that enjoy. people are like. It's just it's all uncovered, you yeah, know. And no, I think that was yeah. part of the reason that yeah. some people were really attracted yeah. to Trump because he yeah. also was the yeah. first person to expose right. the how the yeah. fakeness and the money that went in when he's like, "I gave Hillary a donation, and, and therefore I got to go to Chelsea's wedding." And you can yeah. appreciate this too. You know? he, had, he had comedic timing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Enough. I think I think people just were like, "I like that yeah. honesty." Yeah. Like it's you right. know, I mean. Sure. Speaking so, of speaking of money, I, I yeah. I'm sorry to change the subject, but that water that you're drinking, uh, Alan, it's on our budget. Alan Googled you and he knew that you like that kind of water, so he's like, we gotta get you that kind of she, water. She deserves Perrier. Wait, water. does it really uh, say uh, some an article uh, somewhere uh, in here? No. Yeah. Oh, so because I do like sparkling water. Yeah, I know you do. I know. You do. So like he's like, we got. I was well, like, oh, well, well, all right. So well, thank you. It is a little yeah. bit of a treat, like in a glass bottle, and it's sure. yeah, it's nice. <laughs> you could even mix it with the lemonade. Some classy. I didn't yeah. know you liked lemonade, but I mean, I'll probably, I'm I'm taking them both. <laughs> with me if I don't finish them during this podcast. I do not let anything go to waste. But no, I totally agree with you on the whole uh, Trump thing because uh, no. when you know he won, you know it's like we kind of thought the worst person in the world was Bill Cosby. You know? Right, yeah. <laughs> and now Bill Cosby's oh, thinking, please. thank God for Harvey. Oh, you know no, I mean? and, even when, and speaking of that, when Harvey Weinstein first address the rumors he like said oh they're all they're all lies and you know yeah. but and then he says this whole thing but if i did do anything like I, I, oh my god i didn't mean it or it was consensual whatever he said and at the end he goes but then let's all right. remember who the real pig is donald oh, trump and i'm oh like my. oh my god like, shut a, up no, and harsh. you know like the same thing <laughs> no. it's like kevin spacey being like oh if i'm less this kid maybe i did no. um but I also want to say I'm a proud gay man, and then the gays are like, "Really? <laughs> <laughs> this is the time you choose? Like, you admit to being a fucking pedophile, and then you say, by the way, I'm gay too.' When that wow. is the biggest That's, thing that should never yeah. be associated. What a nice, the two do not go together; nice they have nothing to do with each yeah. other. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. he tried to like slide through yeah. that pedophile thing. Oh, you're the, yeah. you're the latest. Yeah. Yeah. He, he slid. Wait, a, a, right. another person the, just came out against yeah. Kevin Spacey today. Well, oh, who? well you're updating us. Oh my God, it's so just never stops. This um, this woman <laughs> just gave a press conference about her yeah. son who was sexually yeah. assaulted by Kevin Spacey oh, at a boy. at a bar club restaurant boy. thing a year ago. Oh, wow! And he was only eighteen, and oh, he boy. grabbed his genitals underneath his mm. pants, and he was totally traumatized, oh, and and was feeding him all these drinks. And luckily, Jesus. this woman at the bar saw it and went Kevin. up to him when Kevin went to the bathroom oh, and was God. like, "Get the hell out of here!" Oh, and so they've now filed a police report. Wonderful. And. Yeah. Um, He's done. I yeah, can't. the last thing I heard about Kevin Spacey is they interviewed a lot of his former co-stars, mm-hmm. and he did this movie called Twenty One. And someone in the movie said, "You know, come to think of it, Kevin always thought the movie was called Twelve. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 so I, I like yeah. that one. That's you know, I am so <laughs> devastated by both of these because I tell you, I was such. Uh, a Cosby fan, and not not his comedy, but his drama. You you, you might not remember this, but he was on a show called I Spy with Robert Culp. Oh, okay. And his acting was like beyond belief. If you ever get a chance to see a spy thriller TV show, he was phenomenal. They all all these Emmys are incredible. You know, now I have oh. I have the whole collection. And when I'm watching it, I swear to God, at the end of the show, I go, 
what's he going to do at the end of this episode when he goes home? I, it's, you know, you know, now I love, you think about yeah, it. I'm sorry. No, but you know, you're, saying, you're I'm watching, now, it's oh, like, please, no, like, don't have you do seen, that. Um, <laughs> anyway, you, know. you know, when all the stuff came out, they pulled yeah. out like old Cosby episodes, and there's oh, this one episode where oh. he's like, I put something in the barbecue oh. sauce that makes everyone sleepy and horny. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a full episode. you got to be kidding yes. me. Yes, oh, and everyone's at the dinner party like, Losing their oh I mean, it's God. crazy. Also, I heard Kevin Spacey's acceptance speech for Beautiful Mind is very telling. Oh, the Grant's like me and Jester's. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, what to say sir? What is he uh, drinking? Alan's microphone acting up. Is it really? Can uh, you hear me okay, everybody? I can hear you. Yeah, but you, I can hear you. You do speak. If you have something low. to say, just oh, sorry. shout Here, it out. Can, can you hear me oh, now? I was trying to be a huh? Okay, wall thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Boy, I'm getting in all um, kinds of direction today. Now, Heather, I have a question uh, about your your last name is McDonald, but mm-hmm. do people ever call you MacDonald? Yes, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I get a lot of Google alerts for mm-hmm. a Heather MacDonald who is a, a, a yeah, conservative, no, very conservative oh, oh, yes. writer a huge and um, right. speaker. Right. And so I'll I'll get a Google and I get all excited. Someone's wrote an article about me, and it's like, um, you know, students walk out of a Heather MacDonald performance yeah. at a you know liberal college because they're so pure. Curious yeah. that she's conservative, and her shows have been canceled. And I'm like, what? that's not me. Yeah, um, but she spells it MacDonald, M A C, mm-hmm. and yeah. I'm Mick. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's very yeah, common. McDonald, MacDonald, uh, very common mistake. No, but I am not her. I did not no. write Blue Lives no. Matter. I do oh, not. Yeah. No, that was not my book. Yeah, um, I'm just a comedian. But I get about it like a couple tweets a week. Yeah. Someone's writing something real nasty to me that hate her. Well, see, yeah, I could see where, like, in your position, because your first name's Heather, that's, like, a really popular same, name, you know? Same. And uh, when you, your last name's yeah. McDonald, yeah. it gets a lot confusing. Like, I'm really good friends with Norm McDonald, so oh, he doesn't get that a lot. That's McDonald. Right. Because his name's Norm, and Norm's not a real popular male right, name. Right, yeah. You know? So, like, yeah. I figured Heather McDonald would get a lot of hits and stuff, you know? I don't know. Yeah. It's been good for me so far, yeah. you yeah. know? It's a nice name. So. Thank yeah. you. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Uh, we we actually had a Twitter question, which I'll just ask Oh, my now. God. But, uh, Actual but, Twitter question. That's but, great. <laughs> but it was like, but it was funny. It said, Heather, did your uh, dad work on a farm? Or own no, a farm. he did not. Yeah, no, Ronald, like, my brother's not named Ronald. But yeah. when I was a little kid and I'd get made fun of, I would <laughs> tell my my mom, like everyone's making fun of me about my last name being McDonald. And my mom said, just tell them your father owns McDonald's. Yeah, and I said, exactly. oh, my dad owns McDonald's. For, for about a week, I was the sh- I was just That's a shit. Right. And then this kid came to school and was like, my dad says that they're separately owned and it's a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, sh- well, no, we don't own McDonald's. It's like no to, relation to the McDonald to brothers. It. Though I did love that uh, movie. That was a really interesting movie that came out last year with um, uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. And, you know, how McDonald's got started and stuff. It was yeah. it was really well done. I saw it on a plane recently. Oh, I'm also less critical of movies when I see them on a plane. Oh, because Me you're, too. like, forced to watch it? And I don't know. Leave. I think you're, like, buzzed and you're, like, like I'm the least critical on a plane. I'm the most critical if I went and paid for oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Me too. And then if I'm watching at home, it's, like, whatever. Yeah. 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 Everyone's, like, now pirating movies, though. So, like, I don't think people go to theaters anymore. I haven't gone to the theaters. I If I go to, like, sometimes I get invited to premieres that I can go to with my kids. So we'll uh-huh. go then. Mm-hmm. But it's so rare that we go to a movie now. And if we do, then it's like I want to go to the fancy ones where you yeah. can order the drinks and have yeah. the Oh, and then have amazing. a waiter, like, give you yeah. Like, yeah. Those are, And the those ones with cool. the seats down, they, they go up and raise right. your feet. Right, uh-huh. Like a, uh-huh. Yeah. I like those. Now, I have a question because I actually took classes at the Groundlings. Oh, good. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, you took cl- uh, classes at the Groundlings. I, I went through I was in, um, I went through the whole program and I did the Sunday show for two years. Oh, did you? Yeah. And then so, they kicked me out. Why'd they kick you out? Because there was only one spot in the th- 30 per- You know, the main company only has 30 spots. Yeah, yeah. And they need people to leave in order to open up spots, mm-hmm. and nobody wants to leave because once you leave, that means you can't perform Friday or Saturday nights in the in those shows. Uh-huh. And uh, that year, it was just no one was leaving, so there was eight of us that were at two year cr- at Sunday. So, right. um, so they had they picked one person, and it wasn't me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, I think it's okay. Oh. I was like, you know, I was bummed, but then I think I, I was like feeling like I was getting a little too comfortable, right? You know, and I. I, you have to remind yourself it's 99 people that's it that yeah, can see you sure. and you're with 17 other people and you're dying for a tiny sketch and it's not mm-hmm. you know a money maker and it's not so I think it's like a health I, I, there were so many people that were really old that were staying in it though like yeah, it's like yeah. come on sure 
dude, and they still they would not give up the spot. There were people on SNL. There were people on buses that would not give up their spot. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, God, really? Like you're on a series. Like wow. can, you can't like let someone else have a chance. Like did you ever want to try out for SNL? I did. Tr- I, oh, I was, you did. Well, my story was I um, I did this pilot for a sketch show called The Lyricist Lounge on MTV, and it was it was like um, kind of like a living color, but we had. That it was urban. I was like the one white girl, but then they had rappers actually s- rapping sketches, right. and then they had a couple other regular comedians, and we kind of like combine it together. Because um, so I shot that pilot, and then I put a little reel together, and we sent that to SNL, and they were like, "Great, we'll see her." So I was packing my bags. My flight was Tuesday, and on Monday. MTV picked up the pilot, and wow. so therefore I could not audition oh, for SNL. And then after that, I was like, I got married, mm-hmm. and I had a stepdaughter, and there was no way I could really go to New York anyway, so yeah. I never applied again. Oh, that no. I were, know, I could have been Kristen Wiig, but look at me now <laughs> talking to you guys. <laughs> wow, that's a real jump in status. It all worked out. Worked well, out you know, I'm married with, with three kids that's wonderful. that are all doing pretty well. That's so. wonderful. That's great. Uh, yeah, but, I and mean, I've got my own podcast, Juicy Scoop, so I'm yeah, killing it. Yeah. No, I mean, actually, I'm like the happiest I've ever been in my career because oh, it's yeah. it's completely up to me. Yeah, good And I you. don't have to depend yeah. on... You know, a show being canceled or me not getting the part or anything. And, you know, it's generating, you know, great income. And also um, my shows are doing, the live shows are doing great. Yeah. So it's like I miss being on TV. I miss being mic'd up and having my hair and makeup done. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I do it. It's just not as often as when I was on Chelsea for seven years. So that I kind of miss. I miss seeing all my friends. But I get to see them when they come do my podcast. That's cool. Yeah. And I like being able to, like, leave when I want to leave. And, and go sure. to my kids' events and stuff. So all that I didn't wasn't able to do during the those best years. of both worlds. No, explain when because I've seen you do stand up, mm-hmm. like actual stand up. But you said you do your podcast live, so like yeah, I've been doing live Juicy Scoop podcasts, which are really fun. Uh-huh. So this one I just did that was sold out in Hermosa Beach. I had Ross Matthews be my co-host the whole time. Oh, nice. so you know, I did. Def- I definitely spent you know several hours kind of preparing what topics we were going to do. Right. But we have such a great chemistry. It's it was great. It was hilarious. I thought I think it was one of the best ones. And then this. Um, coming up November 16th, Thursday, I'll be do- in San Diego doing one at the American Comedy Company. And the first part of the show will be me doing hot topics and, and you know, being funny with Chris Frangiola, who's hilarious, comedian oh. from Chelsea Lately, who's on Juicy Scoop all the time. And then I'm going to have Kelly Dodd, who is a really kind of outrageous, funny, real housewife of OC from the Bravo Network. She will be uh-huh. my guest. So... It's fun, and yeah. then the, and then the next two nights I do stand up. So oh, some, so, you, so some hardcore people will come to both. Okay. Some are like, oh, I don't know what to come to, and then I'm like, well, I wish you'd come to both, but I feel bad because sure. it's, you know some people sure. can't afford That's to come fantastic. to both. But at least if like you saw my stand up, you know, yeah. in the last year, then maybe I'd say come to the juicy you, scoop. But if you haven't seen my stand up, then it's or if you only saw my special, it's all new from the special. Yeah. So it's like. Sometimes it's kind of cool because I can go back to a city where I did stand up and just do the juicy scoop sh- sooner than I would normally. So, uh, like, so you, you do an episode live for uh-huh. the podcast, and then like the next day you'll do just regular stand up. Yes. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. But so you, if you, I'm there for the weekend, then I'll do that. I like that because you're mobile, and she's going to these comedy venues having her podcast. Yeah. And then bam, she does a comedy. That's a fantastic deal. Yeah. yeah and so then, yeah, it just provides like a little bit of a different oh, experience for me. Me. And then also, then I've got the podcast done for the next week because I do my I do two shows a week. Uh, I do Tuesday and Thursday, which is a lot. Yeah. Is a lot. And then, um, and you know, and I always give uh, over an hour show on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then I also do Patreon, which is a place where people can support me, and I give extra juice, juice that too juicy scoop like if it's like too juicy that I'm almost like a little scared I might get in trouble or it's oh, a little yeah. personal then I just save it for the <laughs> Patreon people because that's it's funny. less of an audience oh, and I feel like God. someone that's going to pay a little bit to listen sure. which is you know it. it's just $5 a month but I feel like they get an extra episode every week that's cool that I feel like they really have my back that's and they're cool. not out to like yeah. pick anything sure. apart yeah because I mean I don't want to talk about that situation because I'm sure you're sick of it but you know 
people do say stuff, but it gets turned totally what you didn't mean. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And uh, I've done that before too, and that's right. why like I'm scared of like having a podcast because like it's like I might have said it, but like what I meant was something totally different. I was so it's, scared for a while, like yeah. shortly after Chelsea lately, and so worried about what I said or what I tweeted, and then I finally was just like. After, you know, my words had been twisted and I'd been screwed over in the media a couple times, that I, then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to tell it all. Yeah. <laughs> the, and the, I got, it made me be no. that much more honest and that much not That's caring. Great. And once in a while I'll say a joke and I, it's a joke and someone writes me some long thing like, I just want you to know, with that, that was very offensive to me. And I'm like, please find another podcast to listen to. <laughs> I won't stop listening. And I'm like, all right, well then what do you want from me? Yeah, there you, go. you know, I, I do three hours, almost three hours of fresh material a week. Yeah. You know, if so, if one sentence bothered you, oh I I cannot worry about that. Please find another podcast That's to right. listen That's to. Right. Like yeah. you're gonna pick it apart with a a fine tooth comb. Like just forget it. You know, I'm a good person, but I'm also, you know, in my 40s. So if I said something that was like somewhat offensive to like your 19 year old soul, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, like a, God. Some kind of an archaeologist going out and dissecting people's podcasts. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> That's what happened with this guy, man. Like, uh, he's on all the episodes with me, but he always messes up the sponsors, and well, then I see, get blamed oh, for it. God. I have a, a terrible <laughs> time, you know, with sponsors, and I, I self esteem, and yeah. I just fall apart. Heather, there's. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, you did a show with uh, John Lovett. Uh, was it like? Oh a my TV? God, that was a few years ago. Yeah. What did oh, I do a podcast? Oh what did I do God. with him? I don't. Do you, I just. I did just, I do a TV show with him? What are you I, looking it, at? It said Lovitz or Lovitz. I think it was like a podcast thing. I, or I, th- I did his podcast one. It, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So Which I wanted like to a ask you. A few years that. ago, before like you know, podcasts were as, as popular, but yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you that because Alan Lee has a John Lovitz like he like they Tell don't me. like each you know, other for some reason. No, no, no. See, well, you're well, both like equally odd. So I, you I appreciate that. Like, you you caught you caught all this chemistry. No, we we found his wallet uh, at the venue, the comedy venue. Remember, it was in Ventura. It was further than that. It was. Yeah. Like, you know, he Alan went, found his he wallet, and uh, okay. so like there's like three thousand dollars or something in it like cash cash and just so, at what at the ventura comedy comp, like that yeah he the left Harvard it place? he forgot it oh. or something okay. yeah and you went in the show after him yeah and, and so found we, it yeah and we were we, we went all the way to the beverly hills uh, hotel you know because that's what his set. id said yeah, he lives at the beverly hills hotel. Yeah, and, that, and so yeah. we call him and the uh the, the concierge says don't worry he comes in he'll be there and so we wait there for like about two and a half hours three hours right yeah and the concierge says, hey listen just leave the wallet here he, he basically said he doesn't care he's glad you didn't take the three thousand and thank you you were nice guys <laughs> There was more drama than that. Alan well, didn't I'm, want I to give up it. the wallet because he's like, I don't know if John well, Lovitz is actually here. So yeah, like he I was, wanted to him to pick up the wallet. Is that a big deal? <laughs> well, you wanted to meet him. And that, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And not even, not even like, you know. I mean, maybe, honestly, he might have thought that. That we were con men or something? No, he might have thought like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He might have thought, like, thought, my God, they've, well, they've waited there two hours. Please let them go. Have them leave the oh, wallet. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You know, we didn't like, think I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought like. That yeah, I would have right. been like, oh my god, I've already inconvenienced sure. this person so, sure, so much. I would have said, please give them, you know, a bonus of like no, a few hundred yeah, dollars no, that, or something for happen. doing this. That didn't happen. But I, I would have also, unless told, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought, oh, they they must be dying to meet me. I would have yeah, thought, well, he's they so already confident. drove this whole way. He's so confident. He said nobody would think of that. Of dying to meet Lovitz. <laughs> Some people don't want to meet him. Quite frankly, remember what the other I, I think said. so too. Someone I think said, I don't want to meet him. He he's fine. He's just like he's like just a little. He's a he's little, a little off. weird. A little yeah. weird. He's a little weird. Yeah. Like where you don't know. Like do you yeah. hate? Are you, do you sure. hate me yeah, or do you know. think I'm Let's cool? I don't know. There yeah. it is. You're yeah. the second one to say that. Yeah. On so this podcast. I just thought it'd be funny to bring up that story with you. Well, I hope your, your I hope she found it on that. entertaining, and and I hope that she you know yeah. she found this entertaining. I can tell that. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Like what's your juicy scoop <laughs> advice on that? Like, do you think he shouldn't return the wallet next time? Oh, well, I don't know why. I mean, it was you that wanted to go and if it was in the club, why wouldn't you have told the manager they left the wallet? He obviously just had performed there. I think it's and kind had of where the, the club, and the manager yeah. would have had his phone number, yeah. and he probably would have turned well, right around him, and gotten we, we it. We told yeah. him we were bringing the wallet to him. That's true. Well, okay. enough uh, about John Lovitz, but yeah, well, it's just a little ask her about another strange person. Oh, Grant wanted me to ask you about Brody Stevens because oh, we're yes. friends with Brody. He was Brody. on our show. We loved him. 
He's so nice. Yeah, he's we love Brody. Eight one eight till I die. Yeah. <laughs> um, born and raised in the yes. valley myself, yes. so yeah. I appreciate yes. his Reseda roots. Yeah. And he was he was really great. He was our warm up guy for many years. Oh, yes, that's right. And and um, you know he's a little bipolar, so he kind of had bit. a breakdown one yeah. day. Yeah. And it was just it got a little bit weird, and it made us feel uncomfortable. And so. Mm. Um, and then he sort of like yelled and quit and he like walked out and we had another show that we didn't have a warm yeah. something like that happened and we, everyone has since made up but yeah. you know it was sad because I felt bad that he that he lost the job but at the same time if you freak out you know it's and you've got uh, hundreds of people in a, a studio you really can't behave like that yeah. so but See, I, it all worked out right but yeah. there was an episode recall where he goes back and uh Knocks on Chelsea's door. What, what's that show? Uh, he did, help me out. He did the show where you he know. did it with um, HBO picked it up and then it was um, Central. yeah Zach Galifianakis kind of yes, uh, produced it. It, yeah. it was sort of like his Thank like you. his little Sorry. reality show. Yeah. But in that, at the end, he freaks that, out yeah. and blows it, and it's like blows it. <laughs> that know, was sort then, of funny. I thought in what, a way. Yeah, but here's the thing: like, I, you I, think I, that like you know. Uh, people that have anger management yeah. problems or a little bipolar like sure. make for great reality stars they do until they're screwing up production sure. right and mm-hmm. at the end okay. it added something but at the same time I think they probably were like I mean maybe it was a ratings mm-hmm. thing but I think they were like you know this is too difficult yeah. to Dr. do Drew. you gotta still be really professional and show up sure. and like be a delight and wear your mic and not complain and not that he was doing that but I think when he had that frustration at the end maybe it just yeah. didn't work out I thought it was fun I loved watching that show though because Alan, I know him yeah I know Alan's saying I have to mention the sponsors again but about uh, Amy <laughs> Wait, I just I just wrote a little something for the middle part I got did this you, one Alan okay oh. <laughs> it's Amy Brick you guys <laughs> Amy sure. Brick is <laughs> got 15 years experience and she is a realtor mm-hmm. and she is out to get you Great. the best price for your home in the shortest amount of time. She knows how to market it. She knows how to get the job done. And she's got the money to be a sponsor on the show. So she's obviously <laughs> successful. That's fantastic. So I suggest no, I'm if you're looking to sell your house, no. meet with her. Definitely have her be one of the realtors that you meet with. Uh, and, her. and see what she has to say. It's always going to meet with a few people. And uh, this is from an artist who knows real estate. Yes, yeah. former realtor. I do have to mention her thing because she's like, you have to mention the okay. ID every time or, or something. Her license. Her license. Her license number. Is that like a thing? Like you can It really, must be. Uh, it must be as, as a realtor, you must have to um, give your license if you're doing yeah, a, yeah, a broadcast. Yeah. Okay. Well, her license for Realtel is a 0135-8129. AmyBrick.com and her number is 562-335-5269. Nice. Yeah. Call her. Uh, See call what her house is worth. Call her. True. <laughs> but uh, the thing about Brody Stevens, like, I, I, I really do like him, but and I, I want to move on from the subject, but, like, I think he has Asperger's syndrome because I have Asperger's uh-huh. syndrome. Oh, interesting. And I do that stuff sometimes, but, like, I, I don't. I don't consider, you know, Aspie's bipolar. It's just like when you get frustrated and things that, you know, it's like, uh. Oh, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what he had, but yeah. he had a, a bit of a breakdown. Yeah. So it might have been a little combo of a few things, yeah. you know. I mean, it's good that we, we acknowledge uh, that we know more about that yeah. stuff, which is really important. Yeah. He you know, his coffee at Starbucks on Laurel Canyon. He's he's great. He's, he's the nicest. Ego. He's the best. He <laughs> okay. really is. He really is I funny. Go is see. He he's and he d- does stand up all the time. Yes, so yeah. we've watched LA. him many times. He was on our show. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, we we have a couple of Twitter questions for, uh, for you. Do, do, do sure, you like Twitter questions? Well, I don't like any question. Uh, Go. A lot of people don't like Twitter questions because you never know if they're <laughs> real Twitter people. I don't true. care. You know just, I mean? just ask this the question. A, she's, a, she's a trooper. Oh. But we'll start with a serious one first. Uh, yes. This is from Pauline Murphy. Uh, any experience as a female comic when it comes to professionalism and balancing sexuality and how to regain confidence for women in the industry? Do you have any tips? The, well, first of all, it is the best time to be a woman in comedy. Yeah. Um, however, it is a male-driven uh, business for several reasons. Mm-hmm. One is you're out by yourself alone at night, okay, <laughs> which guess. is just dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you've got to, you, no matter how creepy the comics are, 
you probably should have one of them walk you to your car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then when they're walking in your car, oftentimes they're, they, they're because they're you asked them to walk mm-hmm. you to your car, they think they have a shot. Guys have an amazing amount of confidence uh-huh. that the minute you talk to them, they think that you want to fuck them. And you don't. You just don't want to be fucked by a, a homeless person. Right. And a lot of comics are homeless, but this is not who, what you want. Well, so go. you have to be firm about it. You have to go, look, yeah, um, bit, uh, you know, I'm not interested yeah. in sleeping with you. Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to give me a tag to my joke, I would appreciate that. And also appreciate a walk to the car. <laughs> uh, okay? no, and not a full body hug. No. Just like, just yeah. let me get in my car. Sure. Make sure that I lock the doors and get on the 405. Yeah. Okay. That's important to say yeah. so um yeah and I, I you know and, and then i think sometimes guys are right now like really kind of resentful because mm. women um are make are getting more spots i mean when it when it was my time coming up there'd be eight people and it was always all white guys one black guy one girl there yeah. could never be two girls and there really couldn't be two black people if that was just the, the lineup. Yeah. So it's not like that anymore, which is really That's good. Great. So the white man has been very put upon. This has been the hardest year for the white man in the history of the world. And that is the truth. Yeah. And, and by, you know. Public enemy number one. There you go. They are. And, and so we're evening out the leveling, level, the leveling the field, whatever you call it. Playing field. Playing field, yeah. And I'm raising two white males. And I That's said, nice. yeah, you... You had a, you were better off a few decades ago. Yeah. So, uh, well, one don't th- be a rapist and uh, work hard. That's right. It's well, going to be a little harder to get the job. Well, one of the things I find <laughs> very very inspiring about you, mm-hmm. and I don't know if people tell you this, but I think it's just remarkable. That is, I heard in an interview that you paid talent scouts to come and see you at a show once. You paid for all their tickets. I did. And I thought that was just really awesome because, like, it's hard for me to get an agent. So I'm thinking it was horrible. Yeah, it's the worst thing. That's why this is this is why this generation we have they have it much better. Yeah, because you can get your you can the hustle is easier. You can put stuff on YouTube. You can have your own podcast. Mm -hmm. You can blog. You can get a Tumblr account. You can kill it on Twitter asking me questions. You do lots of different things. But in my day, the only way you could get work is if you had an agent. And the only way you could get an agent is if you were in SAG. Yeah, that's great. And you can't get in SAG unless you have an agent who gets you work. Yeah. (laughs) So what you had to do was somehow get on SAG. So I had to do some extra work. Yes, we all did. And then um, that was horrible. horrible. And because I was with these people that Mm -hmm. were just taking all this food and putting them in Tupperware for later on right. and that was so depressing to me that I was Ooh. like I can't do this so then I went to an acting coach and I said there's got to be a way to get in SAG on on the sly right? like there's got to be someone at SAG that would like to be paid to have me and he goes there is and his name is Wayne and Wayne was at SAG and I paid him $300 and then he got me my voucher and I joined SAG illegally wow that's um, a good and price and I told about five friends about it and they all got into SAG illegally, and mm-hmm. uh, and then I paid the eleven fifty to be part of SAG. Wow! So there's some juicy scoop. Yeah. I don't think I've ever told anyone. So SAG, then, on, so then I have okay. my SAG card. SAG yeah. came out. Now okay. I have my SAG card, and I can send my resume. You know, SAG. And yeah. uh, this is before it was SAG. After it was just SAG. And then you really needed. <laughs> SAG so out. then. Um, so then I meet these agents, and they're like, "We all want to come see you." I'm doing a stand-up show at Luna Park, and this guy Sam Brown. I don't know what happened. I feel like he might have died. I'm not sure if you know who Sam Brown is. But no. he ran the room. And I said, Sam, I've got eight agents coming for to come to the show. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, can't they be put on the list? Because it's like they're going to see ten people doing stand-up. Like, it's right. good for all of us that we get these, like, good agents there. And he's like, no. So I had to put $64. It's $8 a person. $64 <laughs> on my credit card. Uh. They all come. Get them the great table. I do my set, and um, right before me, this got friend of mine, a really cute white guy, uh, does his set, and he's funny. And they were all like, "He's hilarious!" So they signed him. Oh, yeah. Ouch. I passed on me. Oh. Sorry about that. That's yeah. all right. It's a million of those stories. But at least you, you. But that's what I'm saying. You thought outside the box to get no, him to she see did. you. She took I the initiative. That, it didn't work out. Do you not understand it, that with yeah, your Aspergers? Yeah. <laughs> it did not work out. I did not get the agent. They went for someone else. That's true. Uh, it was a sad that. ending. I it was that. a sad, expensive ending. Empathy. Yeah. Empathy. 
When I married my husband, I was $18,000 in credit him. card you don't debt. Know him, he doesn't uh, thanks know to groundlings, no. classes, wigs, <laughs> paying for agents to see wow. my stand-up, headshots, you, you paying me. Wayne an extra $300. Oh, boy. Uh, you shame me. Yes. Well, if I was Wayne, I definitely would have signed it. Where is me. Wayne? I wonder uh, if he ever got caught. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is great. I love it. I love this, it. this is a Twitter question from <laughs> Jump, yes. Jumpin' Jack Fletcher. Oh, I don't. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a <laughs> great Twitter name. Uh, <laughs> are you pro flip flops or anti flip flops? Hint thongs. Um, okay, so thong underwear yeah. this is referring to um, came out in the late eighties, and I loved thongs <laughs> because it wouldn't give you a panty line. Right. Sure. And but they were sort of just like associated with like strippers or something. And I was like, no, a thong is amazing. Yeah. And then there's this <laughs> thing called body suits, okay, mm-hmm. that came mm-hmm. out, and they're like a onesie. You know how like a baby has a mm-hmm. onesie and you clip it. I don't know uh-huh. if you've ever babysat or anything, but there's like it's like a onesie for an adult woman. Mm-hmm. And in the nineties, they made them a g-string, so it would like go right into mm-hmm. your outfit. It would look great. Stop with that. Mm, oh, I'm just out. like that. It's, okay, it's, so, it's, it's, it it's sounds really, so anyway, it really sounds good. <laughs> so yes, I'm a huge Tell fan of that. Tell me story again. They're they're good for when you you know for not giving you like a cut panty yeah, line in your sure. ass uh, in your jeans. So, so yes, a, I'm a for whole, them. Whole bathing suit is cut cut with the scissors. Cut. No, I don't wear them in a bathing suit. <laughs> no, I mean a I just whole wear them piece. in underwear. Like, oh, the top, yes. Okay, it's like top. a long top yes. that yes, snaps yes, like at your crotch yeah. so that you, your it's shirt stays the nicely into your... The shorts. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. And then the last Twitter question <laughs> we have for you uh, is from, I'm asking for a friend. How are you and Harvey getting along? Oh, okay. Oh. I've never met Harvey Weinstein. I think he's so gross. I've always thought he was so yeah. disgusting. At like Job of the Hut, and I, Ooh, I, Job of the Hutt. and I just, I'm actually shocked he hasn't killed himself. To be totally frank, yeah, Ooh. yeah. I mean, his life is so mm-hmm. so over mm-hmm. that I'm like, he really must have a, a lot of uh, will to live. No, yeah, I don't. Th- yeah, I. I mean, if anybody I agree should with that. consider it, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harvey, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. But I guess once Eat a he, bullet. You know, because, I mean, who knows? I mean, if he, do, if he goes to jail, if he doesn't go to jail and he just pays everybody out, he'll still be rich. Just no one's going to come over. Yeah. But you know what? He'll still get some weird girl sure. that'll sure. want to be his girlfriend like O.J. did. Like, oh, he still true. will get some gross that's girls true. that will, like, be with him. Speaking of O.J., well, did you hear for did, Halloween he was, yeah, like, he, passing he, out he, candy in his Bill's uniform? In his, yeah. He no, put, his jersey, where? His jersey. His jersey. His, 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 where is he living? I think in Florida. Vegas. Vegas? Yeah. Uh, well, TMZ he? caught up with him recently, and he was walking out of some place, and there he's like, yeah, I love Vegas. And he goes, have you talked to Caitlyn? Like, Caitlyn oh. Jenner. And he goes, no. I, he's like, I don't know Caitlyn, and I really didn't know Bruce well either. He goes, but if she wants to live her life as an old lady instead of an old man, well, old ladies live longer, so maybe she's on to something. And I thought, well, that's a positive, like... Yeah. That's a nice little... OJ's become a lot less judgmental after yeah. nine years in jail. Sure. Well, Good well, for him. With the, with we, the jersey, we just got the light, saved. which means we only have a minute yeah, to well, wrap up. Great. But, but Heather... I decided to leave. <laughs> no, Heather gave but, us a, a, an amazing performance. Yeah. But Heather, you're going to be doing uh, so the much. podcast and stand-up at the American Comedy Club next yes. week. All right. Yeah, next week, November 16th in San Diego. Okay. 16th is the Juicy Scoop podcast. That's almost sold out, so get your tickets for that. And then the stand-up shows twice a night, Friday and Saturday, seven, November 17th and 18th. That's Everything's at heathermcdonald.net. Wonderful. So Twitter, check out. Facebook, stuff all, like that. Yeah, you just go sure. there, and you can get the info for the free podcast and any of my dates coming up in your town. So. Great. American uh, Comedy in San Diego. Yes. Awesome. And uh, i got to mention the sponsors before we close out. Uh, this episode, again, was sponsored by Amy Brick, real estate broker, with Brick and Company You mean a real estate, estate broker. Broker, yeah. yeah. Broker. Not Bricker. <laughs> no, Her name is Amy Brick. She, yeah. she doesn't do bricks. <laughs> she, doesn't. Uh, she, she will sell a beautiful brick house. Uh, there you go. But so. she specializes in helping people sell their home for the highest price. Uh, give her a call, 562-335-5269. Uh, amybrick.com and her license number is BRE 01358129 and uh, that was sponsoring us with uh, Heather McDonald and uh, that's awesome thank you yes, for coming so thank much you, uh, Heather really thank you Heather McDonald wow this was a blast nice and meeting you guys thank you yeah. thank and, you for uh, my drinks of course yes, and uh, I'll be doing a comedy at the Rec Room with Namir on November 24th oh, I'll be filming Namir. my yeah I'll be filming my Comedy Central audition thing so hopefully that works out. Uh, rate the show on iTunes and subscribe on 
that and all that stuff. You know, tweet, tweet. I'll okay. raise the riffs. Beautiful. Heather Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Heather McDonald. Bye. All right. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.